I think that as we move forward, as leaders in our community, men or women, one of the great gifts that we can bring to public policy conversation is to ensure that anyone who wants to be part of that process, male or female, is treated with dignity and respect, given the opportunity to speak up and then brought into the conversation. Because I believe if people know that they can speak truth to power and that they're safe in doing that, that that will fundamentally change the way that we have conversations. I think that it's possible to do that and that that is even bringing a new light to politics in Alberta. Because even in my own government, I'll hear people say, well, that's not the way we've done things. And I think that we all experience that at different parts in our lives. But then we have to, strength to, have, to have the strength to say, that's absolutely right. And that's exactly why we're asking these questions. And sometimes I rem I'm reminded of the fact that there's an awful lot of people who I got to talk to in the last provincial election who looked at me and thought, I don't know if I can trust you to ask the right questions, but I'm going to give you a shot. So when I'm doing the work that I'm doing, I feel that I have an obligation to ask those questions because I think there's a lot of people who said, we're electing you because we want you to ask those questions. We want you to have a different paradigm. We want you to change the way we talk about issues. And we want you to talk about the issues that actually matter in our communities. And I think that as we move forward, it'll be a tremendous opportunity for us to be able to engage more people, hopefully at a younger age, to connect into this public policy conversation. Because regardless of where we've grown up in this country, and I know there's probably a lot of people in this room that didn't grow up in Fort McMurray, we have a set of Canadian values and traditions that truly speak to what the famous five aspired to be. The legacy of the rights and the freedoms that we now have, that they only dreamed of, is something profound, and it is a sacred trust. Now, I would like to see more women in leadership opportunities across this country, and I think we're seeing more all the time. I have to say that as we do this, the nature of the conversation changes. There was actually an article when I first became Premier comparing my cleavage to Christy Clark's. <laughs> and I remember at the time, I mean, I, whatever. <laughs> she had more. <laughs> As you can see. <laughs> um, but I remember at the time laughing about it with my husband. And what I will say that is that as a political leader, conversations like that come up an awful lot more when you're a woman. Hair, makeup, shoes, cleavage. Oh, you look so much prettier in person. Oh, you look so much younger in person. It's really interesting to me, because I got to tell you, before I got involved in politics, never would have crossed my mind that people thought about that. Probably never would have crossed my mind that I probably thought about it the same way as people do. So I throw that out just in terms of perspectives that we have when we look at leaders across this country, whether they are male or female. Because we're very fond of saying, and it was actually in my speech tonight, that we have to make sure that young girls understand that the only obstacles that are in their way are the obstacles that they put in their way. And that's not true. And the best thing that we can do is acknowledge that. It's not about blaming anybody, it's just life. This is life. You know, I don't, you know, you talk about the famous five being surprised that we'd have female leaders. I gotta tell you, I think my grandpa would have been more surprised. <laughs> you know, we all live in the circumstances that we live in. And we all know that people make assumptions about us. Some people make assumptions about us based on where we're from. Some people make assumptions about us based on our gender. But if we think about the important thing in leadership generally, and what the famous five spoke to, essentially in my mind, it was community engagement. It was being able to connect to a community, men and women, around a set of values that we all cared about. And the best that we can hope for 
is when we look at our sons and our daughters and at young people in this room and the young people that we meet that are aspiring to be great leaders, that we ensure that we're creating environments that allow all of them to demonstrate their talents equally. That each of them is given the opportunity to demonstrate that they have the ability to succeed. And I will say that from my perspective as the Premier of this province, I want to ensure that every child and every girl truly believe that they have the ability to excel. Because we can be excellent. And we can raise sons that believe that women will be excellent. And we can raise daughters that believe that they can be excellent. It is also true that every little girl that looks at every one of you women in this room will see a leader that they can aspire to be. And it is a responsibility. And it's a privilege to be in leadership roles and to be able to demonstrate to young girls that they have those opportunities. Because at the end of the day, for each of the jobs that we do, little girls should be able to see what you do and wholeheartedly believe that they could do the same thing. And I know that the tradition of this series and the support that industry puts behind this sort of work, the fact that you are all here today, speaks to the fact that we all have determination to accomplish the same thing. So I thank you very much for allowing me to be here tonight because every single day I learn more. Every single day I meet someone else who makes me think about the decisions that we make in government and why we make them. As we move ahead as a province, I think one of the things that we can be most proud of is the leadership that we have in our community and the leadership that we have in our province that are truly creating an exceptional environment for our children to succeed and to know that an important part of that is demonstrating the leadership so that girls know that they can. Thank you very much. A takeaway for me tonight is how that, that leadership quality, that commonality can bring all these wonderful people together in, in the room. I see the same people coming to these events time and time again and uh, you know whether it's listening to Premier Redford or listening to a gold medal uh, Olympian or any of the other great speakers that we've had, it's just every one of them brings something to the group to have them really go home and think about. And for uh, you know Premier Redford, um, she she's just such a, a great leader, a great role model, a woman that's able to manage all the commitments in her life of family and work and travel and. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how she does it. <laughs>